Did you know that we have more than 3,000 counties in this country? Some of the smaller states have less than 10 counties. Some counties are big and rich and others are small and poor. The counties we're going to be talking about in this video are the worst counties overall though. Sadly, a lot of the places that we're going to talk about are bad pockets in America. Most of these have seen some job losses. Many are places that haven't had success before at all. And some of these might be a surprise, but all of the numbers we're going to look at are very shocking and a real glimpse at just how much the struggle is real for many of us. It's sad in our rich country that we've got big pockets and counties like this that have people that are struggling so bad. Anyways, we've got a lot to get to. We have all 50 states to visit, so we should probably get going. We're going to begin our trip of America's worst counties in none other than Wilcox County. Kind of a smallish county of 11,000 people just west of Montgomery. The biggest city here is Camden. Here in Wilcox County, it's super poor. One in three people lives in poverty. This is actually the 10th poorest county in the country. And lots of people are leaving now. This county's lost 7% of its population in the last 10 years alone. There's about a thousand manufacturing jobs here, but still, the unemployment rates double the national average. Most of the jobs here were in agriculture, but most of those jobs are long gone now. Now, Alaska is one of two states that don't have counties. So we're gonna have to look at what the census calls a designated area. The Bethel census area is a big area on the western side of the state with 17,000 people. 80% of the population is Native American. This is actually only one of three designated county type regions in the country where neither English or Spanish isn't the main language spoken. Almost everybody here speaks the Yupik language. And as you likely know, areas in the country that are primarily Native American are areas that are very poor and blighted. It's very sad. Back in 2012, pranksters announced this part of Alaska would be getting a Taco Bell. Everybody got all excited, but it was fake. But Taco Bell stepped up anyways and brought 10,000 tacos in a helicopter. That's awesome, Taco Bell. And no, they didn't sponsor this. Apache County, Arizona certainly has issues. This long-shaped county along the New Mexico border is also heavily Native American, where three and four residents are Native. A lack of jobs way out here means people are poor. Almost four in 10 people here live below the poverty line. Since there are 70,000 people here, that's a lot of poverty, making it the seventh poorest county in the nation. This county also has the highest rate of car accident deaths in the country at 82 per 100,000 people. Slow down and stop drinking and driving, Apache County people. Way out on the eastern side of the state of Arkansas's Delta region is Phillips County, home to 17,000 people. But the population here is plummeting big time. Look at the population drop since 1920. At this rate in 60 years, there won't be anyone left here. Can you imagine that? This county also ranks as one of the unhealthiest of all Arkansas counties too. Helena, West Helena is the biggest city here and it's super poor. But crime is also way out of control here too. This city ranks as the second worst place for crime in the state, just behind Little Rock, which is like a war zone in some parts. No, Los Angeles or San Bernardino counties are not the worst places you can live in California, but they're really out of control with crime and homelessness and traffic. But Lake County, a really pretty area two hours north of San Francisco, is the worst county in California. This is also part of California's wine country, but most residents here don't see the benefits of that booming industry. Clear Lake is a community here. While people are still coming to California, they're leaving Lake County, even at a rate higher than places like San Francisco and LA. Houses up here are in the 125,000 range, which is super cheap for California. This one here is a real fixer upper. It could be yours for 35K and no, I am not a realtor. But the good news, this county has the cleanest air in the nation. So that's fabulous. Otero County is losing people every year too and hardly any areas in Colorado are losing people. So that's saying something. Poverty and a lack of jobs are the big culprit. Otero County residents earn about half of what other Colorado folks do. So it's harder for people here to get good medical care. A lot of people here are unhealthy. 40% of the community is Hispanic. Now, of course, a formal education isn't always a sign of success. Since many hardworking folks have had a great run at it without long schooling, Colorado is one of the most educated states, but half of Otero County dropped out of high school. What is going on? Speaking of wealth and education, Connecticut is sort of a have and have nots state. 
Much of the western side of the state's really well off. But here in Wyndham County, way up in the northeast near Massachusetts, people are the poorest and least educated of all Connecticuters. But that's relative to the rest of the state. Most people here are doing okay. It's actually not that bad here, but we had to pick one. Folks in Connecticut might say Bridgeport and Hartford are terrible places, but those aren't counties, people. Those are cities. Now, Delaware only has three counties. It's the second smallest state right behind Rhode Island. Well, one of the three is worse than the other two, and that would be Kent County, home to the capital of Delaware, Dover. Now, this county isn't that bad either, really, when you measure it up against some really other bad counties we're going to talk about. The population's actually growing fast here, and most people just lead average lives in not too dangerous living conditions. But somebody has to lose. This is the worst one when you measure poverty rates, jobless rates, and quality of schools and crime. Union County, Florida, though, is struggling. This is actually one of the worst counties in the country. The average life expectancy here is 11 years less than the average American. Located up in the northern part of the state, it's actually the smallest county in the state by square mileage. Unlike most of the other counties we're going to talk about, Union County actually has a low unemployment rate, so most people here work. However, the local economy relies heavily on the Union Correctional Institute, and that's a maximum security prison. So the jobs here are really stressful and dangerous. Correction officers rank as the sixth worst job in the country. Anyway, Florida has some great places to live, and Union County is definitely not one of them. Welcome to Ben Hill County, located in the south central part of the state. This was once a major center for the timber industry, but the market in this area has changed, so a lot of people fled into nearby Florida to work on citrus farms. Here, only about 1 in 10 people goes to college, and 3 in 10 people live in poverty. Those are both well below Georgia state averages. There just aren't a lot of good jobs way out here in the sticks, where the biggest city is Fitzgerald, a place with 9,000 people. Drug use is a big deal here, and people say there just isn't anything to do for fun or stimulation. Just strip malls, fast food, and huddle houses. Is there a bad place to live in Hawaii? Not if you like warmth and beauty, but Hawaii County has issues, more so than any other place you can live in the state. One in five people here on the big island receive SNAP assistance and the number of people in poverty is twice that of the rest of Hawaii's counties. But overall, plenty of people work, and there's actually far, far worse places you could live in the U.S. Again, I had to pick somebody because I'm talking about one from every state, right? Idaho is the fastest growing state right now because people from Washington and Oregon and California are leaving their overpriced and overpopulated hoods. But Uwai County, way up on the Oregon-Nevada state line, is actually losing people. Why? Opportunities. It's rural and sparsely populated, and half the people who live here have to drive into another county or state for work. I mean, they're not mining gems out here like they used to. In comparison to the rest of the state, the schools are way worse, and on paper it doesn't look like a good place to raise a family. But in today's America, I'm sure there's tons of people who would love to get a place way out in the middle of nowhere that's safe and isolated from all the BS. I mean, look at this place. One and a half people per square mile. So maybe this isn't a bad place after all, depending on what you're looking for. No, Cook County isn't the worst place you can live in Illinois, but it very well could be, depending on what part of the Chicago metro area you're in. Saline County, though, is troubled in many ways. Located way south, practically in Kentucky, they're losing people at a high rate. 25% of the entire county's on welfare, which is just sad. There's just no jobs down here. For work, it's coal mining jobs, but those are dwindling. The city of El Dorado's here. For work, it's pretty much Liz's Cafe, China House, Dad's BBQ, the 4S Dairy Farm, or Los Reyes, a Mexican joint, unless you're a doctor or a teacher or a mechanic. Okay, maybe there is a lot of stuff to do here for work. I don't know. But here's another interesting fact. The life expectancy in Saline County is just 75 years, which is the life expectancy for somebody from Kuwait. <laughs> Switzerland County, Indiana. Again, way down along the Ohio River near Kentucky. Poor Kentucky. There's only 10,000 people down here, and it's 98% white. It's actually growing down here, though, and people aren't that poor. But relative to the rest of the state, when you measure jobs, employment, and quality of schools, it's last. One somewhat reputable website gives Switzerland County a D+. D+, that's so mean. Houses here cost about $116,000 each. That's not bad. Did you know Kat Von D is from this county? She's from BB, a town of 1,600 people. What? No way, Mappy. I don't know who that is, but she has a lot of tattoos. Hey, is that a tattoo on your face? What is that? It's a snake. 
Uh, I don't think that's a snake, Mappy. That looks like a pile of poop. Uh, Mappy has poop on his face. Nasty. Did you even look in the mirror? Oh my gosh, Mappy's going to have to use that $5 I give him for every episode and start saving up for tattoo removal. But for now, we move into Iowa and Lee County. We're way down near the Missouri and Illinois borders. Keokuk is the main city down here where homes are priced at about $71,000, which sounds like a steal, doesn't it? Well, that's because it's one of the most dangerous places in the state with a lot of poverty. But it's rural Iowa. You're going to find lots of pockets like Lee County here. Teenage drug use, some rundown buildings. Most folks around these parts still working hard for a living, though, I tell you. This is a unique one. We're actually in a major city here. Kansas's Wyandotte County is not isolated at all. It's actually across the state line from Kansas City, Missouri, and home to KCKS. That's Kansas City, Kansas. Here, it's not a lack of opportunities or things to do. It's the crime and the welfare. Only three quarters of the 157,000 people in this county finished high school. One in four kids here dropped out. What is going on in Wyandotte County, people? And this is the fifth most dangerous metro area in the nation, like Cleveland and Milwaukee level dangerous. But would you look at all the dang Chuck E. Cheeses nearby? That's enough to make it worth it. Kind of take away your distractions a bit. Going to a Chuck E. Cheese as a kid. You were so cool when you threw your birthday party there. Now we talked about Kentucky earlier. As you can imagine, there's lots of really troubled counties on the eastern side of this state mainly due to a loss of coal jobs and generational reliance on welfare. McCreary County is the third poorest county in the country, where nearly half the population lives in poverty. This is just another example of how devastating it is when the coal and timber industries just ended in Appalachia, right? Now, Louisiana doesn't call theirs counties. They call them parishes. Some of the deepest pockets of Louisiana are extremely poor, and Madison Parish is no different. This parish along the Mississippi River is a former cotton producer and pecan farming region. That seemed way better times. They're losing about 10 people every month from this county, which might not seem like a big deal, but when there's only 11,000 people left, it's starting to become pretty noticeable. Now, the unemployment rate's twice the national average, and one in three parish residents lives below the poverty line, where many people live on about $800 a month. This is about as rural as it gets in America. Some of the places here are so small, you can't even find pictures of them on the internet. Piscataquis County is a really unique place with lots of good, tough, hardy Americans. It's way up practically in Canada, taking up 4,400 square miles. Most of Maine ranks as a good place to live, but here, while it's super pretty and rural, folks are leaving in droves. A lack of jobs for the kiddies and a history of poverty make it the least desirable place to raise a family in the state. You'd only have one neighbor in a mile in every direction, though. And a home up here can be obtained for only hundred grand, which makes it sound better and better, actually, doesn't it? Of course, Baltimore is going to be Maryland's worst place. This is by far the poorest and most dangerous place in any direction for hundreds of miles. Now, some are going to say Baltimore is an independent city, which technically it is. But according to the census, though, it's considered the equal of a county for most purposes and is a county equivalent. So there, you learned something. Baltimore is a county. Anyways, Baltimore sucks for many reasons, but you knew that already. So we're starting to go through some places that are more urban now, aren't we? Springfield, Massachusetts is challenged in so many ways with drugs and crime and poverty. It lies within Hampton County, which is on the Connecticut border. While most counties in Massachusetts have an overall household income that's far above the national average, folks here make less than the national average. Social well-being metrics are the worst here than any other county in Massachusetts, and this is the least healthy county of all other Mass counties, too. Lake County, located up in rural northernish Michigan, is the state's poorest county, where folks bring in about half the incomes that the rest of Michiganders do. Jobs are hard to get out here. In fact, when you measure income, education, and health, Lake County is last in all of them. There's only 12,000 people here. It's pretty up there, though. And for entertainment, you've got, well, a bar. Way up in the middle of nowhere, Minnesota, lies Wadena County, home to 13,848 folks. It's the poorest county in the state where mom and dad bring in about $1,200 a month. I mean, this is just small town, boring, rural America, folks. There's practically zero good jobs out here. You could work at the post office, or you could work at this post office. Oh, hey, there's a candy making job. That would be kind of fun. I would love to make candy. 
I bet you would, Juan. Making candy is a very important job. Without candy, we wouldn't need dentists. What's your favorite type of candy, Juan? This kind. Ooh, pulparindo. That looks good. Mmm, good one. Thanks, Juan, for sharing. Now, Mississippi's troubled in many ways. We've talked about that a lot here on this channel. Holmes is the second poorest county in the nation, where 45% of this county's 19,000 residents are in poverty. The jobless rate is also three times higher than the national average. They lose about 1% of this county's population every year. So in 100 years, you guessed it, there's going to be nobody left. The schools are bad. There's nothing to do. A lot of the people here are unhealthy, and it's a food desert down here. That means there aren't a lot of places to get good food. Pemiscot County is down in the Missouri boot near Tennessee. They're losing about 1% of the population a year here, too. While the rest of the United States gained a year in life expectancy, people in this part of Missouri lost average life expectancy down to about 72 years. There's only one review of this county on a regional ranking website. Drugs are a real issue in a place where there are barely enough jobs to cover the inhabitants. And that just about sums it up, folks. Here's an example of another county that's dominated by Native American reservation. Montana's Roosevelt County is almost entirely in the Fort Peck Native American Reservation. There's a handful of smallish towns along the southern edge of this county where I guess you could carve out a decent life. Maybe working at a hotel along the long stretch of Route 2. What do you think? Dakota County, Nebraska is way up along the Missouri River right next to Sioux City, Iowa. So there's going to be a decent number of things to do and job opportunities. Still, it ranks the worst when you measure jobless rates and poverty rates. But Nebraska is a state with decent everything. So this county isn't that bad when measured up against many others on this list. You may have seen all the police chases in Nye County, Nevada on television. If you even have television anymore. That's because there's a lot of people running around drunk and or with drugs. A lot of domestic abuse, petty theft, mental illness. Lots of people in beat up homes and trash everywhere. So sad, Nye County. So sad. Coas County, way up at the tip of New Hampshire, ranks worst when it comes to everything we've been discussing. Berlin is up here. It's been run down since the paper mills closed a long time ago. But up here in this part of New Hampshire, it's just rural small towns. People who are poorer than the rest of the state. But still, the metrics here are actually pretty good when you compare it to just about every other county on this list. So Coas County is just a decent place and a standout state. Way down, just about as far south into New Jersey as you can get is Cumberland County. Now this is where you would call a lot of people rednecks. Vineland, Bridgeton, and Millville are all economically challenged places to live. This was also called one of the two worst counties in the state for raising kids. Cumberland County was. 15% of kids in this county are chronically absent from school. And nearly 3 in 10 kids here live in poverty, which is just terrible. Now New Mexico has a lot of poverty, especially in the Native American parts. 75% of McKinley County's population is Native American. The average person here earns about $1,000 a month, and 40% of this county's 71,000 people live in poverty. That's a lot. It's dangerous here, too. This county has a crime rate that's double the national average. Gallup, the largest city in this county, is the most dangerous place you can live in New Mexico. Bronx County, or the Bronx, is technically a bureau of New York City, but it's classified as a county by the census. The inner city neighborhoods here are conducive to high crime, drug use, and poverty. In fact, 3 in 10 people here in the Bronx live in poverty, and almost 4 in 10 get welfare. That's like double the state average. And only 7 of 10 kids here finish high school. What is going on in the Bronx? Robeson County, way down along the South Carolina border, is sort of a rural county with small towns mixed between forest and farmland. This is home to some of the most dangerous areas in the state, and a lot of generational poverty too. This is the only county in the state where 30% of people live in poverty. There's just no good jobs way down here since the agriculture left years ago. Way up near Canada is a very unpopulated county of Roulette. Now, energy jobs have been a big boost in North Dakota. But as we know, those are short-lived. But they don't even have those way up here to help those hard-working folks out. It remains the poorest and most out-of-work county in the state. There's just not a lot going on. But it's North Dakota. What do you expect? Seems that for every state that touches Kentucky, their worst county is on the Kentucky border. Interesting. 25% of Adams County is on welfare, and when they shut down a large power plant in the area, that made things worse. Lots of kids drop out of school and begin using drugs here. It's all very sad. Adams County makes places like Toledo, Youngstown, and Dayton look like average cities in comparison. 
One in six households in Choctaw County, Oklahoma, earn less than $10,000 a year. The whole house, less than $10,000 a year. No wonder tons of people are leaving this county. A hundred years ago, there were 32,000 people. Now there's less than 15,000 people. This whole county is located within the Choctaw Reservation in Oklahoma, but still two-thirds of the residents here are white. Mulhere County is one of a few counties in Oregon where the population has actually declined over the past few years. That's because a lot of people are moving to Oregon these days. But when you've got a lot of rural poverty way out in the far reaches of a state, well, people are going to leave. But there's literally one house per square mile out here. So if you're into rural living and have a steady source of income, I guess it's not that bad a place to be. Maybe this county was doomed from the start, though. The word mal here is French for misfortune or tragedy. Philadelphia is a straight up mess with the amount of crime and drug overdoses and outright poverty in so many areas. So it's no surprise that Philadelphia County would be considered the worst county in the state. 25% of people here are on welfare and 15% of households, the entire house, make less than 10,000 a year. In a major city like this, 15% of people make less than 10 grand a year. What a shame. And to make matters worse, people are still flocking here. Are they coming to help change things or take advantage of the system? The smallest state in the country has only five counties and Providence County has more than half the state's population. This is actually not really a bad county when you measure it up against most of the other counties we've talked about in this video so far, but there's large pockets of Providence proper which struggle with everyday life. Welcome to Marlboro County, the least healthy county in the state where people die on average before the age of 72. The population decline of 1% a year can be partially attributed to early deaths and because people are leaving for better opportunities. Remember when we visited North Carolina's worst county? This one lies directly on the other side of the state line. So the whole area along the North and South Carolina border south of the Charlotte metro area are troubled. Oglala County, South Dakota is, according to data, the worst county in the country, everybody. 95% of the population is Native American. Half the folks live in poverty, which is the highest rate in the country. And 60% of the population lives on food stamps, which is also the highest rate in the country. And 4 in 10 people don't have health care, and that's the highest rate in the country. This whole county falls entirely within the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in southern South Dakota, kind of way down by Nebraska. The average person here only lives to be 66 years old, which is also the worst in the country. 66 years old is more in line with developing nations like Pakistan and Tanzania. That's just so sad and eye-opening. Just northwest of Chattanooga's Grundy County, where things aren't going very well, it's mostly small, poor towns. But check this out. Some jerk got busted for breeding dogs here. They rescued over 250 dogs from his backyard operation down in Grundy County in living conditions that look like this. That, folks, is outright inhuman. It makes me sick. If you guessed that the worst county in Texas would be near the Mexican border, you'd be correct. But it's not directly on the border, but it's close. There's only 11,000 people way down here, but the population continues to grow at about 1% a year. It's nearly 100% Hispanic, and 40% of the kids never finish high school. Half of all kids here need welfare to pay for their meals. Way down in the Four Corners area of Utah is San Juan County. It's grown pretty fast, but there's still only one house per square mile. This is outright crazy. One in 10 households earn less than $900 a month. Much of this county is composed of the Navajo Nation Reservation, but the county's still 40% white and there's no casinos here to bring in much needed jobs either. Now Vermont's a really safe and well off state, but high taxes and a lack of jobs mean many people are leaving. Way up along the Canadian border is Orleans County, part of the state's Northeast Kingdom. If you're not into dairy farming or the lumber industry, well then you're out of luck, pal. But while this is the worst county in Vermont when you measure opportunity and poverty, it's actually not that bad nationwide because Vermont's a good state, that's why. Petersburg, Virginia operates as a county, even though it's a city. It's kind of complicated, but it gets thrown into county by county measuring analyses. Petersburg suffers from a tanking economy where nearly 12% of residents is out of work, the third worst unemployment rate in the state. They were a big deal here when tobacco was around, but no longer. You can get a historic home for not much money, but that's about the only plus. The school system's bad. The city recently came close to being bankrupt and crime is through the roof. A lot of people in eastern Washington live there because they like the rural aspect and they want a lot of land and some peace and quiet. An alternative is this in Seattle, so there's no fault in people wanting to live way out there. 
However, Adams County is the only county in the state where close to 4 in 10 kids never finishes high school. What is going on in Adams County Public Schools? Anyway, when you don't finish high school, you're not going to do well in life, minus certain exceptions. One third of the population here is Hispanic, and most of them work in agriculture. Hey, we need the labor, but it's likely this aspect which is throwing off the metrics here. Now, there's a lot of bad counties in West Virginia, and McDowell stands out as one of the worst counties in the nation. Way down along the Virginia border, this county has only 17,000 people. That's a massive drop from just 70 years ago when there were 100,000 people who lived here. So a lot of people are leaving. Most of that's because of technological advances in the coal industry. Back in 1950, this region was the nation's biggest coal producing county, and one out of every six people who lived here worked in coal. But coal jobs are going away, and most people aren't skilled in any other trade. For everybody that remains, a third lives below the poverty line, and only one in 20 people goes on to college. We're almost done, everyone. Wisconsin, Rock County. It's way down on the Illinois border. A lot of people from Illinois are moving up here for welfare benefits, since Wisconsin provides 22% more assistance than Illinois does. Places like Janesville and Beloit are suffering from a growing number of crimes, drug users, and a growing poverty rate. That's why Wisconsin calls people from Illinois fibs. Wyoming, our last state, yay! Uinta County is about as rural a place as you'll find in the most rural of all states outside of Alaska. Super pretty place. The population here is holding steady. The numbers here are all above national averages, but when you look at poverty and crime and education, it's the worst in Wyoming, but it's not terrible there. I mean, here's a comparison between Philadelphia County and Uinta County. Which one would you pick? All right, everybody, we did it. The worst county in every single state. Many of these are places that have been poor or dangerous for generations now. Most are rural and most have seen their main source of employment disappear over time. We gotta continue to evolve. If we don't need people to grow crops or build cars or dig coal, don't we need them to build robots or put in internet lines or make electric car batteries? Or are we just buying that stuff overseas now? And do these people even wanna work anymore? I mean, if you've been out of work for so long, you kind of get used to it, right? Anyways, hope things improve in all these counties. They deserve better. If you're looking for ways to help get involved, there are so many places to volunteer that you couldn't even do it all. Fostering a kid, helping a troubled youth, walking dogs, or helping seniors around the house or at the grocery store. There's all kinds of things we could Google right now to see how we can get involved. So do that, or at least, Think about it for a while until your conscience takes over and you finally give in. Just saying. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.